My name is Tony Brent, and I'm a professional entertainer. It's a party. Let's party! <laughs> Where's the knife? Whoops. <laughs> in the bag is something you've all seen before. You made him drive around in one. That's right, it's a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it ain't ever been used. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, we had a, uh, a fellow that would come to my school every year, and he would do a uh, magic show in the, in the school, elementary school, and it was sort of a say no to drugs program. He did this little magic show, and it had sort of like a message to it, and I think that's what inspired me. I did little shows for other kids when I was a kid, and I did that off and on from the time I was about 12 until the time I was about 16 and then I'd lost interest in it altogether and I got interested in acting and theater and then I went to college and studied drama and I didn't perform any magic or anything until much later. From the time I got out of college I did a lot of theater and I did some commercials and industrial films and things like that. That was really what I was my primary interest was in. There are some things that you could learn in an afternoon. I could go home, learn something, put it in the show tomorrow night. Some things take many, many months. I think the bottom line is with that is how long does it take to get a routine really, really good, as opposed to just the sleight of hand. And I would say the answer to that, it can take years to get a actual routine to where it's what you want it to be, if, if ever, if you ever get it there. But it's, in terms of the sleight of hand, it, it, could, it could be, it just depends on what the, what the trick is. I always wanted to learn to play the guitar and I originally started learning eight or nine years ago just for fun. And then I had the idea that I wondered if I could play the guitar while doing some kind of magic trick. Freebird! <laughs> so I started experimenting uh, around with it for a while. And I tried a couple of things in the show and I didn't feel, they just didn't work for me. And I really wanted it to be hands free. I didn't want to have the awkwardness of having to play part of the time but then stopping to do something else. And I really wanted to do it because I thought it'd be unique and something that nobody else does. And so it was, a, it was a trial and error thing. I just kept working on different ideas until I hit on something that worked. And then I hit on the idea with the card thing because also it allows me to ad lib with the audience by asking them questions. And I get a lot of mileage out of that based on what they say. Sometimes it's really, really funny. Sometimes it's not as funny, but when you ad lib in a live show, it creates an energy that nothing else does. I, I run and say, they're always after me, Lucky Charms. Say it really loud, really loud, I love it. I'm a monster Lucky Charms. <laughs> and you can instantly see it by the looks on the audience's faces because they don't expect it from a, a magic show. They expect a series of tricks. And when you actually start talking to them as people, they like, you can see, they're like, oh. And, you can, and, and it creates a different, whole different vibe in the room. So I, that's what I wanted to do that. And the ukulele also along the way, it's sort of, to me, in my mind, it's a little intermission. I fell into a burning ring of fire. Signatures on the guitar, that all started uh, years ago. I was watching Austin City Limits and there was a guy playing, it was an acoustic guitar and he had a signature on his guitar. I thought, what if I let people sign my guitar? I do some work with the Florida Children's Hospital and I go out there once a month and I entertain the kids and their, their parents and their siblings and everything. I took my ukulele one day and I said, you guys want to autograph my ukulele instead of me autographing things for them you give me your autograph so that guitar right there uh, has autographs from those 
uh, children with cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, Wonderworks is proud to present Shazam! When we started the show, it was sections in the show where they let me do my own thing. And three months or so after the show started, the owners go, we're just going to let him do his own thing. So over time, I slowly changed the show, and I took all that out, and I made it more comedy. And it was a decision based by the owners to change the name, and we were in the offices one day trying to come up with an idea for a name, and we were all up there, and we were joking around, and one of the owners goes, you guys are out of control. And we all instantly said, we love that name. So that's where the name came from, literally. The show's out of control. And I wrote it down and said, let's call it that. And that's how it started. I don't know really what, really exactly what to compare it to, um, other than to say it, you know, it's a wonderful feeling to make people feel good because you never know what's going on in a person's head. So they may come in here and they may be tired. They've been in a theme park all day. It's, maybe it's been raining. Maybe they're depressed. Maybe they're really hungry. Maybe their children are upset. Maybe somebody, you never know what somebody's situation is. And if you can do something that takes them out of that for a little while, for an hour, and makes them happy, makes them laugh, I think it's a gift, you know, to be able to do that. You come down off of a show that's really, really good, and everybody is pumped and you can feel the energy, it's, it's, a, it's a high, it's, it's, it's addictive.